The IRB protects human subject study participants and their rights and welfare, okay? The IRB, if we put it through the IRB for a review, we know that we're following ethical requirements and federal regulations. If the research activity is a systematic investigation designed to develop or contribute to generalizable knowledge, okay? All right, generalizable. We want to apply it in other avenues or areas. If you're doing primary research, so that means you're capturing the research yourself. You're doing those surveys, okay? You're interviewing people. Um, so if you're doing primary research and you or your students plan to publish, that's a key phrase right there. If you plan to publish, you need to engage the IRB. Faculty research day posters are considered publishing. If neither you nor your students plan to publish, meaning you're doing research activities in your class, you're going along, it's really great, and there's no intent to publish that, then you're fine. If the research activity is a systematic investigation designed to develop or contribute to generalizable knowledge, and if you're conducting secondary research, that means you're going, like the examples below here set, you're going to publish data that's commonly available out there. Now, if you're doing secondary research and you use publicly available data, like census data, labor statistics data, you don't need to engage the IRB. Absolutely correct. Because you can't take any public data and trace it back to who responded, right, in order to single them out. Um, so, and it's very rare cases where it's identifiable. So that's why if you're in question, just contact us and we'll walk you through it. And if the U.S. government funds your, um, your research, you also have to go through the IRB because they expect you to do that. So we, that's where the three levels come in. So you've got exempt, okay, exempt uh, studies. You've got expedited protocols. You've got full board reviews. Exempt. Well, that's when you have a study that will have, it provide, presents less than minimal risk and meets one of, there's several exemptions categories. And certainly, you know, once you get into this, you'd see them. We have all documentation I'll get into in a minute. Expedited is the next level. That's when minimal risk is presented with a, maybe we need to do a minor change to the research. And there are several evaluation categories for that as well. All right, finally, the full board at the very top. Well, that's when the um, study presents more than minimal risk. It's got a complex research design. It's got a, it includes sensitive research questions, and it involves potentially involves vulnerable populations like children or prisoners or stuff like that. Now, you notice we're not doing a lot of research with children, and we're not doing a lot of research with prisoners. You'll notice that the foundation is the widest. Sure, it's a pyramid, right? You'll notice that most of our that, that's intentional. Most of our um, studies fall into the exempt category, okay? Full board, notice how it's the least, all right? You do a full board review where you got to get together multiple times, et cetera. We'll get into that. That happens on more of an exception base. So you got to take a one-time investment in city training. So no matter what, you got to do that if you're going to do any engagement of the IRB. Then if you have an exempt research, you got to fill out the forms. They take about 30 minutes to complete. Um, and then within 10 days after you submit it to the IRB, then within 10 days and 10 days on the outside, you will get your feedback. Now that feedback may not be a is not a rubber stamp. Um, all right, next, expedited review, no matter what, you gotta take that training. Now for expedited review, you're gonna fill out an IRB application packet, which, takes, would take, which will take you about two hours, plus additional time for signatures, because yes, there's signatures involved got to get signature. And then you'll get your IRB approval or feedback within one to three weeks after submission. One to three weeks. It's more involved, okay? Now, a full board review here on the right. Still got to take that city training. Got to fill out the IRB application packet. Uh, that'll take about two hours plus additional time for signatures again. Now, your IRB approval will vary depending upon the request that the group, that's the IRB, asks you for. Now, remember, full board reviews are on exception. So if you're in a full board review, yes, you do ought to expect an iterative process. Now, you'll notice this takeaway. Don't fear the forms, you know. Students conducting exempt research need to take social and behavioral research, basic and refresher, stage one, the basic course. Faculty? And any students conducting, so all faculty, all faculty, and any students that 
can't get by with an exempt research request and they have to do expedited and full board, they got to take, you got to take three courses. Think of the IRB process as a train that's on a schedule, okay? All right, get on board now. You can't collect any data until you have that IRB approval. I mean, it, it becomes invalid, right? Like for publishing purposes, because it wasn't following the protocols. We want to kind of guide people correctly, the, the, you know, from the get-go.